Hey guys, what is up? It is your good buddy Sam. Oh my god, Apple update, what are you doing? God, shut up. Hey guys, what is up? It's your good buddy Sam, and it's time for another exciting MaxMSP tutorial. Um, I know it's been a long time since the last one, and I feel terrible, terrible about that. My soul is torn into pieces with my shame at the dishonor I brought to the family of Max tutorials, but that's okay. It's a new year, and happy new year, by the way. Um, so we're going to do the new year right and going to put a whole bunch of tutorials out and everyone's going to learn Max and the whole world will come together in a rich tapestry of Max and everything will be better and all the problems will be solved and no one will have to occupy anything ever again. So in the spirit of that, um, I want to talk to you about a new and really amazing feature in Max 6 called Gen. Three little letters, but so much awesome. Um, Gen refers to a whole family of new cool stuff in Max 6. It's an add-on that you can buy, sort of the way you could buy Jitter with Max 5. Gen is a little, you pay a little extra and you get this whole suite of new tools that basically um, provides you code generation. What that means is that you can do things like um, write a patch, connect an actual patch, use the Max that you're familiar with, that you know and love, and it will compile that down to C code, to this optimized code that runs natively on your machine, and that runs much faster and lets you do things that you couldn't normally do um, on your computer. So, in the spirit of trying to learn how to do that, I want to focus on some of the uh, Gen objects for Jitter, because one thing that Jitter lets you do, um, that Gen Jitter is going to let you do, is compile max patches down to shaders. What's a shader? Um, a shader is the most incredible thing on God's green earth. It actually lets you, for each individual pixel, that you're processing before you actually output video run a program. It gives you one program per pixel. It's like one laptop per child, but for pixels and video. And that was a dumb metaphor. But the point is that it's really, really cool. It lets you do super optimized and awesome things. So today we're going to use it to do something silly and pointless, uh, keeping a tradition with Max. So first thing we need to do is get some video in. How do we do that? Well, we use jit.grab. Jit.grab is, for those of you with MacBook Pros, how you instantly get MacBook MacBook Pro input into your patch. Um, it just gives you access to video devices, and in this case, we can just pass it um, an open message, and it will open up our video device. And you can't see it, but the little green light on my laptop just came on because my camera has been activated. And we're going to make a QMetro. Uh, give it an argument of 33. QMetro is like Metro, but it's a low priority metronome, which means that um, it's going to ask for, when it asks for, um, output, when it outputs its bang, that bang goes on a different thread with a different priority than your normal metro. So in other words, it won't slow down your patch uh, if the processing gets to be too intense. I think that's what it is anyway. Um, make a jit.p window, which just outputs video into your patch and make it nice and huge so we can all see it. And now we should have some video. And it's my face! It's my beautiful smiling face. Look at it. Look at it, world. There it is. There it is for everyone to see. Okay, so we've done that. And now what we want to do is do some processing. And what we're going to use for that is this wonderful object called jit.p, no, jit.gl.pix. Jit.gl.pix um, lets you do gen operations on, rather, in an OpenGL context. In other words, it interfaces with your graphics card to let you do graphics processing. Um, utilizing the horsepower of the GPU to do some really serious heavy lifting. And also because it's light is ridiculous. Also because it's max, it um, because it's gen rather, it's gonna let you write those pixel shaders in your in a max patch, which is pretty incredible. But Enough about that. So there's a whole bunch of OpenGL junk that you have to copy uh, when you use GL, and the way that I usually get it is just by right-clicking or uh, option-clicking or whatever to open up the help, and then copy all this stuff. So what do you need? You need this JITGL render. Uh, JITGL render is a jitter object that actually renders an OpenGL context. Um, you need a window that represents that context. You need, and finally, you need this JIT video plane object that's going to um, is an interface for rendering OpenGL to video so that you can see it. So what I like to do is grab everything in here. Oh no, oh my god, wrong thing. Grab everything in here and copy it. And then paste it into my patch. Wow, that looks awful. Paste it into my patch, and now we need to rearrange things a little bit. I'm going to destroy this QMetro and use their QMetro. Uh, plug their QMetro into my jit.grab, turn it on, and now everything should be working. Um, 
I don't want to use their JIT QT movie though. I want to use the output of my JIT grab. And now just once for a lot, just let's make absolutely sure that everybody knows, understands what's going on here. Um, what's going on? Up here, we've got our Q Metro. Our Q Metro, uh, every 33 milliseconds, sends out a bang that first erases our OpenGL render context and then tells it to redraw. That render context, in this, because it's uh, this CTX here, and this window is also named CTX, that means that this GL render uh, references the GL context that is this jitter window. It's as simple as that. Um, GL grab here sends its output to this JIT GL pix object that for now is doing nothing. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. That goes to this video plane object that renders that GL context as a video to the window. So when that gets rendered, it draws in the window and the output looks like this. Oh, actually it is doing something. It's making my face come out in quadruple. So as beautiful as it was singular, now you get to see it as four. So you're welcome. Um, and one thing I like to do is if you highlight JIT window, push command I to bring up the inspector and then search for float, you can make the window float on top of everything um, so it doesn't constantly go out of view. And I think it's pretty helpful when I'm um, in the process of making the patch. So anyway, now let's get to the meat of this thing, uh, which is this, which is this, um, the actual shader that's going to run for every pixel. Um, in our patch. And what we're going to do is implement something very, very simple. What am I looking for? Zoom, navigate, zoom. Oh my god, can you not zoom? No, you need to unlock first. Can you not? Yes, thank god. So what we're going to do is write a little program that's going to run for every single pixel um, in our little processor here. What the hell just happened? It's going to run for every single pixel and for every single pixel it's going to do some computation and we're going to use the output of that computation to make a really silly effect. Um, so what's that effect? What we're going to do is look at the pixels in this image and we're going to do something that's like chroma keying and what chroma keying is, is it's green screening. It's that effect where you take every pixel and if it's a certain color or has a certain property you replace it with the contents of a different video. Um, I know it's not the most advanced, exciting effect in the world, but, I mean, honestly, I'm learning this uh, stuff too, so that's where I'm coming from. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you what we're going to replace it with, and then you'll realize just how silly this is going to be. We're going to replace it with a very silly kind of noise. Um, so we use a jit.noise object and give it the arguments for char 320. 250. And what that means is uh, make a JIT noise object that has four planes. That's red, green, blue, and alpha. Um, char is the type of each pixel. Uh, doesn't actually matter in this case, but usually it does. And um, <laughs> three, I hope no one saw that. 320 and 240 are the dimensions, which happen to be the dimensions of that, uh, from JIT.grab. So actually, let's make this more interesting and give it the dimensions 8 and 6 and then um, bang on that to pass the output of that. And then we'll make a jit.matrix um, for char 320, 240 at interp um, zero. And all this is gonna do, you'll see exactly what's happening in a second. This makes a eight by six matrix of noise. Um, and this scales it up to a 320 by 240 uh, matrix of noise, but it doesn't, um, do any interpolation. So it should just look like, uh, it will look like it's an 8 by 6 matrix, but in fact it's got um, a full 320 by 240 pixels in it. So that's what that noisy matrix looks like. So now let's get to the meat of this thing, what we're actually going to do. So what we're going to do um, is take everything in here and delete it. And what we're going to do is take every pixel in our input matrix that is um, below a certain threshold in brightness and replace it with the contents of that other matrix. So for that we're going to need in another in2 here and this is the input of that other matrix. This is going to be that noisy input here and we're going to also make two parameters. One parameter we're going to call thresh because that's the threshold and another parameter we're going to make um, I don't worry about that one. We'll just have one parameter and it will be called thresh. Um, okay, so 
how's this going to work now? So what we do is we take the input here and we want to get the brightness of the pixel. And a pretty good approximation for brightness is something called luminance. Um, so to get luminance, uh, we take the red, green, and blue values, scale them, and add them together. We're going to use an object called Swizz, and what Swizz does, I should mention by the way that in this, you can see the patch background here is a slightly darker gray color. That's because you can only use objects from the gen family of objects here in the contents of a gen patch. This patch here is going to get compiled down into code code, into actual you know lines of code that you can't read in the current release of Mac 6, but I think one day you will be able to. Um, and because of that, not every max object is open here. You can only use uh, max objects from a certain family of objects. So the trade-off, of course, being that you get a lot of horsepower with those objects. Um, anyway, so this Swizz object does something called swizzling. And in this case, we're just going to use it to separate out the red, green, and blue values. Red, green, and blue. Take those values, and we're going to scale them. Uh, using 0 0.2 for red, 0 0.7 for green, and 0 0.1 for blue, which is a, a very rough approximation of how much each of those color components contributes to the brightness of the pixel as uh, a human retina interprets it. Um, so we're going to multiply those together with this multiply object, and that will do the vector multiplication that we expect it to, where each component is in one is multiplied by each component in the other. Then we're going to do swizz r and duplicate it twice and call this one, oh no, call this one Swizz G and this one Swizz B. And this will separate out the red, green, and blue components, obviously. We'll add those together, plus. And the value that comes out of here will be the um, luminance value, the brightness, the intensity of that pixel. And all we're going to do is check if that value is um, greater than a certain value. This greater than pass will um, give us the value if it's greater than a threshold and will give us zero otherwise. So we send this value to greater than pass. We put the threshold down in here and then um, uh, no, that's lame. We'll just do greater than. Don't worry about greater than pass. So uh, we'll take the value. If it's greater than a threshold, it'll be one out of this outlet. It'll be zero otherwise. And then we're going to take all of that and use it with a mix object. And mix uh, crossfades between two inputs. So when it's left input, we're going to give it our original matrix. And on the right input, we're going to give it this middle inlet, rather. We're going to give it our noisy matrix. And all the way in the right, we're going to send it this thresholded value. So every pixel who's below a certain value in brightness is going to get replaced with that noisy um, matrix. Hopefully that all makes sense, is all clear as custard, and we should be good to go. Um, jump back to our main patch here, and I'm going to give this um, at thresh 0 0.9, so that everything below 0 0.9 in brightness is going to get replaced with um, noise. And now there's my face, and nothing's coming through, so that's a bad threshold. Let's try 0 0.5. Nothing's happening. That sucks. Um, why is nothing happening? Because I'm doing this live, and that's why nothing's happening. Swizz, red, green, blue, because I didn't do this. This should go in here, and this should go in here. Um, those are getting multiplied and scaled. That's definitely working. Coming in, getting added, greater than, mix, and it's not working. Greater than, pass. Hmm. Interesting. Hey, okay, cool. So let's see. Um, oh, because I didn't actually pass this noisy matrix into the thresh. So we'll pass this in here. Ha! <laughs> And <laughs> look at that. Also, see all that bright shit in the background is getting replaced with um, noise. So it looks like I'm sitting in a bedroom full of, oh my god <laughs> oh, look at that that's pretty cool so yeah there's me floating in here's my my shitty windowless bedroom but it's filled with uh this horrible pixels in the background um well wow, it's pretty dope and then i guess we can go back into this uh patch if we want and um take the value that comes out of here 
and uh, instead of taking that value we can take that value minus one and what that will do is instead of working with the brightest pixels it'll work with the darkest pixels I think this will be pretty silly to look at too uh, the thresholds all screwed up now but if I make this um, say nine yeah check it um, so now my coat is replaced with this my, my cold weather coat is this uh, Technicolor dream coat <laughs> Oh, and look, my pupils are coming out as horrible demon circles, too. That's really funny. <laughs> look at that. Uh, yeah, cool. So anyway, there you go. There's my uh, exciting tutorial. I hope that was helpful or interesting. Um, if you have comments, questions, or concerns, please let me know. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope that was wonderful for you because it was for me, and I will see you hopefully very soon. Ciao.